Hey, Billy. Oh, hi, Pete. Thought you'd never come. You do all this this morning? Yeah, that was my deal with Mom. Keep chopping until you came. We all set? Keep chopping. Why? No fishing trip? Maybe later. I have to go to the reserve. Chief wants to see me. Right now? Yeah, sounds important. Okay, if I come? Well, I guess the chief won't mind. Are oh, you looking awfully pale these days? Oh, come on, Pete. I'm more of an Indian than you. <laughs> The young men of the tribe would climb to the top and fast there for several days. According to legend, they would have a vision of what their life's role would be, and then they'd return to their tribe to fulfill that vision. Sounds fascinating. No, the Indians still regard it as a sacred place. And the young men still go up there? Oh, no, I don't think they go anymore. It's all superstitions anyway, isn't it, Nancy? Roger Lemure, I'm shocked with you, just shocked. Why, I thought you had an ounce of romance left. Romance? About women, yes, not rocks. <laughs> I'm a modern man, hard-nosed and practical. A hard-nosed, practical world we live in. I see you brought Billy Williams with you. He's my friend. Is he? We don't see much of you these days, Pete. I keep busy. Working for the Williams? I'm like one of the family. Don't fool yourself, Pete Gawa. They're whites. You're an Indian. Doesn't make any difference to them. Well, it should to you, unless you're planning on becoming a white man. You asked to see me. I'm disturbed, Pete. By what? You. You spend more time in a white man's world and you forget your own people. I don't forget. No, but you don't come around unless I send for you and then you bring the white kid with you. But he's like a brother. I teach him things. But who's going to teach you? You'll be a man soon. What have you planned for the future? I don't know yet. Well, you better soon start thinking about it. Time's passing. You're going to be a guide for the white man, just hunting fish? Or are you going to do something to help your own people? Look out there, Pete. What do you see? I see our reserve. I guess it's a pretty good place to live. Lots of things happening all over. The people sure seem happier than they used to. And the kids are getting better schooling, aren't they? Maybe soon we'll get some more new schools. I don't know. I see a lot of good things, Chief. Things that you did for the reserve. You don't see the needs, the hardships, lack of opportunity? Look harder, Pete. I see that, too. Well, what are you going to do about it? You're bright, Pete. It's in you to be a leader. Don't waste yourself. I don't intend to. But you spend more time with that boy's family than you do your own. The Williams are good people, but they don't really care about our problems and our traditions. They care. Right now, there's a man from the Serpent River Mining Company staying at their lodge. The company is surveying a new quarry. Where? Dreamer's Rock. But that's sacred ground. Not to them. The company owns that land. Their man, Travers. I found out he's going to blast out some samples. Dynamite. Billy must know that. He didn't say anything? Nancy tells me you're with the Serpent River Mining Company. Are you here on business? Oh, no, thanks. No business. Just a vacation. Chance to put my feet up and relax. Which I think I'll do right now. I've got a detective novel waiting, and I think I know who done it. Excuse me. I got things to do. It's our time. Something wrong? Look around. What do you see? I don't see anything. No, I guess you don't. Something eating you, Pete. What does the chief have to say? Maybe you should go back to the lodge. You got guests, haven't you? Yeah, just one. Some mining guy. The rest coming on the weekend. 
Now you're doing some guiding, remember? Am I? Hey, there is something keeping you. What did the chief want? I'm going to be busy this weekend. With what? Indian business. Where's Billy? I wonder where Pete is. You know, he tried his darndest to get out of chopping wood for me this morning because he and Pete wanted to go fishing. And now he's back alone. Maybe they changed their minds. Knowing Billy, he's back home to eat. <laughs> That's a very logical explanation. I'm going to make some lunch. Do you want some? Sounds good to me. You look as though you just lost your best friend. I just may have, Roger. I just may have. Those two boys have been inseparable. Then suddenly, this. Oh, maybe it's just one of those quarrels that kids have. By tomorrow, it'll be forgotten. I don't think so. It seems to be a much deeper thing. Nice night out? Not bad. Feel like some chess? No, thanks. You always win. I promise to lose. Billy, uh, your mother and Roger were telling me about Dreamer's Rock. How'd you like to show me the way up tomorrow? Do you want to climb Dreamer's Rock? Sure, why not? Well, it's a very sacred place to the Indians. They don't like us white people to go up there. Oh, I'm sure nobody will object to you and Mr. Travis going up. What do you say, Billy? Okay. But be prepared for a tough climb. Don't worry. I'm prepared. Quite a sight, isn't it? Certainly is. You're quite a good climber. I've done a bit of climbing in my time. Want to look around? Sure. Billy. You suppose anyone would mind if I uh, took a few samples? Of what? Rock. I'm something of an amateur geologist. I suppose it'd be okay. Isn't that just ordinary rock? No such thing as ordinary rock, Billy. And these, these are especially interesting samples. Pete! What are you doing here? Hi. We were, uh, just taking some rock samples. What for? Look, Pete, I only brought Mr. Travis here to see the view. You've seen it. You can go back down. Now, hold on a minute, son. See those rocks here? This is a sacred place. I don't think you're in any position to give those kind of orders, young man. Um, this is my friend, Pete Gower. Your friend could do with some manners. Look, Pete, we didn't mean any harm. You don't have to explain anything. We have as much right to be here as he has. More, in fact. We'll see about it, Mr. Travers. We better go. All right. But we'll be back.
wish you'd been here when we got back from our climb. Travis has been studying those rock samples ever since. He's been making all sorts of long-distance phone calls. So? He's been phoning the mining company. Strange for a man on vacation. Yeah, that's what I thought. And the way Pete acted. It's not like him. I think something's going on, Roger. And Travis is mixed up in it. Beginning to have the same feeling. I think Dreamer's Rock has something to do with it, too. Maybe we should put the question to Mr. Travis. Put what question? There seems to be some doubt as to your real purpose here, Mr. Travis. I, um, I gathered as much. You don't seem to be putting your feet up these days. Not only that, I still don't know who done it. Mr. Travis, why are you here? Well, I guess there's no more need for secrecy. Serpent River Mining is exercising its mineral rights to Dreamer's Rock. You mean you're going to mine Dreamer's Rock? If all the tests check out, production will begin next year on a new quarry. You're going to tear down the rock? Well, at the moment, all I'm finding is a test blast at the top. Three o'clock tomorrow. Dynamite? Just a small area to check the quality deeper down. Do you realize what this means? Dreamer's Rock is an important part of the Indian culture, and this lodge would be worthless close to a quarry. Look, Roger, a quarry here will provide jobs for 200 people. I don't care if it's a thousand. If you're worried about the lodge, I'm sure the company will make a generous settlement. We don't want your money, Mr. Travis. We want the mountain left alone. I'm sorry, Billy. But that's it. No, Mr. Travis, that's not it. I don't know how yet. But I'm going to stop you. And Mr. Everett, one of the vice presidents, is on the way here. I'm convinced they won't go through with it once they know the whole story. I'm not so optimistic, Nancy. These men aren't fools. They know how people feel. Still, they plan to do it. But Mr. Everett might listen to reason. I only hope the chief comes. Even if he does, there's no guarantee the company will change its plans. But if we can get the chief and Mr. Everett together before Travis dynamites, I think we have a chance. I hope so, for everyone's sake. But please, Nancy, don't get your hopes up too high. I'm glad Billy went to the reserve to see Pete. If we fail, it's just as well the two boys aren't here to see us. You know, maybe I'll never fully understand what it means to be an Indian. But I've always been your friend, Pete. And I still am. Maybe it's never meant for us to be friends. Come on, Pete, that's crazy. I'll tell you something. I was on top of Dreamer's Rock for three whole days. I didn't need anything. Just drank water. The way my people did in the old days. On the last night, I saw something. Like a dream. I saw myself standing. Both feet across a big gap. Does it mean anything? I haven't figured it out yet. But I'll have to figure it out here. On the reserve. Where I belong. No, I don't. You belong with your own people. Come on, Pete, don't give me that. Hey, tell me something, Billy. The mining company is going to destroy Dreamer's Rock. Would it really matter to you if your lodge wasn't right across from it? Okay, you want to know the truth. Yes, it would matter. Maybe not as much, but it would matter. That you were the one who taught me to care about things like this. A few years ago, well, I wouldn't have cared. But right now, I do. That answers the question. Nothing more to say. Pete. There is something more to say. Now, forget about our differences. We'll solve them later. Or maybe we'll never solve them. But right now, all that matters is that we stop them from tearing down Dreamer's Rock. I'm listening. Okay. Now, Travis plans to dynamite at 3 o'clock. That gives us one full hour.
Thank you for coming, Chief. We want to make the company's vice president aware of your feelings as well as ours. It won't make any difference. This is Mr. Travers. He's the head of the company's development branch. Yes, we know who Mr. Travers is. Chief, uh, I understand your feelings, but it was the Indians who sold Dreamers Rock to the white men more than 150 years ago. It was stolen from us, Mr. Travers, like most of this country here, for a few dollars, a few trinkets, and whiskey. I see your vice president is arriving. He's early. Good. That means we can blast sooner than I planned. Will you talk to Mr. Everett, Chief? I didn't come here to talk. I don't see how you can go through with this, Mr. Everett. Your company is going to alienate everyone in this area. I appreciate your concern, Mr. Lemieux, but according to my sources, there's no problem. The Indians don't appear to be unhappy with the project. In fact, it opens up enormous work opportunities for them. If your sources are mainly Mr. Travers, then your information is wrong. I'm sorry, I have perfect confidence in Mr. Travers' judgment. If the Chief had had anything to say, I'm sure he'd have made his position clear. But the Chief's position is clear. He expects you to understand it. How can I if he remains silent? The Indian silence is louder and clearer than all your words. <laughs> you can't expect me to cope with that. Chief, you must talk to him. How else will he know? Mrs. Williams, I spent a lifetime talking with men like that. It does no good. But Mr. Everett seems to be a reasonable man. He'll listen to you. You have good reason for saving Dreamer's Rock. Has he listened to you? But I am only one voice. You are many. One voice should be enough for a reasonable man. The charge is set not to create a lot of flying debris. There'll be some, but it'll fall the other way, so we'll be perfectly safe here. It's about 15 minutes earlier than planned, Mr. Everett, but if you're ready. Anytime you want, Travers. All right, stand by. We'll go in 20 seconds. Billy and his friend Pete Gawa. Those crazy kids, they knew we were blasting today. Travers, what's this all about? Well, they're trying to stop us from blasting. Get on up there and bring them down. No, wait. Mr. Everett, this is what we were trying to explain to you. Those boys are telling us that they care about this mountain. They care enough to risk their lives to save it. Now, the chief is a proud man. He's not going to beg you to stop. But no Indian will ever work in a quarry on that mountain. Your company may hold the deeds and the mineral rights to it. But it doesn't just belong to you. Dreamer's Rock is sacred to every one of us who lives here. You'd better go and fetch those boys down. Mrs. Williams, Mr. Lemieux, I can appreciate what you say, but 
Since the chief hasn't spoken, I have no alternative. Mr. Everett, as has been pointed out, I do not beg. That's one thing the Indian in this country will never do again. All I can tell you is that what Mrs. Williams says is the truth. That mountain is worth a fortune, Mr. Everett. There are others, Travers, equally valuable. Don't we own the rights to a mountain on the other side of McGregor Bay? Yes, but we'd have to build a road. We'd have had to build a road here anyway. We'd just build a longer one. At least the other mountain isn't sacred to anyone, is it, Chief? Dreamer's Rock once belonged to your people. Maybe sometime you'd like to talk about buying it back. And we have other things to talk about, like jobs in the new quarry, the road that has to be built? We will talk, Mr. Everett. The chief has done a lot here. Still a lot to do. Hope I can help. Well, you can count on me for anything. Thanks, Billy. Hi, hi. Say, did you ever figure out that dream of yours? About standing with your feet across a wide gap? Maybe. To be kind of bridge between two worlds. What do you think? Yeah, it makes sense. Just don't burn your bridge behind you. <laughs> Thank you.